Okay, this video is the most memorable lines in vegan history, which is the real history of nutrition. And we'll organize it a little bit in terms of starting with carbohydrate. And I realize there's other great lines that could be in here. Maybe we'll call this part one. This is sort of like the Pareto principle. You get 20, 80% of the benefit from 20% of the effort. It's all right here. Um, and like I said, I'll maybe make a part two of this in the future as more lines come to mind. Um, I just spontaneously wrote this this morning. Okay, so here it is. Best lines on carbohydrate. Uh, Dr. McDougall, he says, all healthy populations eat a starch-based diet. There are no exceptions. Humans are starchivores. Okay, Dennis Burkett. High fiber diets protect patients from abdominal pressure syndrome. Uh, Durian Ryder. Sugar is the most powerful performance enhancer for your brain, your muscles, and your dong. Unfortunately, I don't know for sure about that last part, but I can tell you for when I give lectures or for when I'm working out trying to get my personal rep maximum, guzzling down that you know, 32 ounces of beet juice, I don't know if it's because of the sugar or if it's because of the nitrates in there generating nitric oxide or it's the hydration, uh, but I know my performance has improved a lot. Okay, uh, myself, uh, fruits taste great, but are less filling than starches. A little bit of a joke, you know, on the, on the commercial, as you all know. Okay, lipid, Caldwell Esselstyn, no oil, not one drop, moderation kills. You only see heart disease in the countries that eat a lot of meats and oils. It's very clear. Coronary artery disease is a foodborne illness. So the reason why these lines are so memorable is that once you get these things, they're like transformative statements. You see... You know, it's like a Copernican inversion. You'll see an entire field differently. Okay, Nathan Pritikin, fat is bad. There is no such thing as a normal occurring diet that is deficient in fat or protein. In studies with controlled diets, people who ate 0.75% fat did very well. So the point is, you know, even less than 1% fat. And uh, the study uh, patients were doing great. So this idea that we need to eat so much fats, it's quite ridiculous. You know, it's been shown there's a lot of omega-3 fats in just regular plant foods. Okay, rice wank. Central Norway eats a lot of saturated fat, and they have a lot of multiple sclerosis. Coastal Norway eats much less saturated fat, and they have much less multiple sclerosis. The Chinese diet is mostly rice. It's very low in fat. And I don't think there were any MS patients in China. Okay, so rice has less than 1% 1, 1 fat. So the point is, they don't get these diseases, you know? When you eat a rice-based diet, which is a starch with 1% of fat, there's no obesity, there's no diabetes, there's no hypertension, there's close to zero autoimmune disease, very little cancer. Okay, Dr. McDougall. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. It doesn't matter what type of fat you eat. It's, there's no magic fat in nuts or in seeds or in um, uh, fish. They're all going to make you gain weight the more fat you eat. Uh, Jeff Nelson. Jeff Nelson is the guy. He uh, runs the, the YouTube channel VegSource. He's a very smart guy, and he's very good at making videos, real sophisticated production. They're very entertaining. Um, I've learned a lot from him. So anyways... He says, the fat in nuts is also bad for blood flow. The benefits of omega-3 fats are exaggerated. So you'd have to go see his videos to get that, but he does an excellent job of you know, getting his points across. Okay, Michael Brownlee, PhD. He wrote the best paper ever written in the history of diabetes research about a unifying theory for diabetes complications. And he's the one who figured out that excessive dietary fat causes reversal of electron transport in mitochondria. And this causes insulin resistance. Basically, it shuts down the mitochondria and that creates a traffic jam in all of carbohydrate metabolism. It's a disaster. Um, in a sense, the cell senses overnutrition and says we can't take in any glucose now because we can't even deal with the energy uh, sources that we've got on board already in our mitochondria. So that's an extraordinary statement, by the way. If you, ever, if you really care about diabetes, you want to read that paper. It's like the best paper ever written um, in diabetes. One of the greatest scientific papers ever written. The Unifying Theory of Diabetic Complications. Okay, Gerald Shellman, MD, PhD. He's a guy out of Yale who was working with nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, being able to identify individual molecules inside of skeletal muscle cells. And they just confirmed what Brownlee had said. Yeah, we've confirmed the excess fat in skeletal muscle is the main cause of insulin resistance. And it's the earliest detectable finding. And he called his theory the ectopic fat theory of diabetes. Okay. Um, all right, so bottom line is the number one thing that causes insulin resistance, insulin resistance is excessive dietary fat, especially saturated fat, but fat in general. 
you know, it's going to make you fat, it's going to increase uh, blood lipids, and they're all going to increase your risk of diabetes, all the fats. All right, William Roberts, he's a cardiac pathologist, he did a whole bunch of research. He wrote the best paper ever written on coronary artery atherosclerosis, where he quantified all the autopsy uh, of coronary arteries in people who had myocardial infarctions or died of uh, cardiac arrhythmias. And what he showed was it's always diffuse. Coronary artery disease is always diffuse. It's never single vessel disease. It just means that they, their cardiac cath didn't get the proper views to show the severity of atherosclerosis in the other coronaries. It's always diffuse. It's a systemic disease, okay? All right, um, and then he says, when you feed a high-fat diet, all herbivores will get atherosclerosis, and humans are herbivores. So what percentage of humans get atherosclerosis on a high-fat diet? They all do, okay? And people talk about the Maasai. Well, the Maasai, you know, they look pretty healthy. Well, the Maasai, they exercise a tremendous amount, but when they did autopsies on them, they have tons of atherosclerosis. Okay, William Roberts continues. He says, um, eggs are what you feed to an animal to cause atherosclerosis. Because I know a lot of people that think, well, eggs are healthy. Yeah, right. That's what you feed an animal to give it atherosclerosis. <laughs> All right, uh, then yours truly. There is no such thing as good fats except secret fat. Fiber is good fat. Fiber is safe fat. Unlike other fats, fiber protects you from leaky gut. So what's the point of that? All of these, you know, high amounts of dietary fat, they're all associated with increased leaky gut, increased autoimmune disease, and those put you at risk for all those other problems, postprandial endotoxemia, et cetera, increased inflammation, et cetera. So the point I'm making here is that fiber is converted by your gut bacteria into short-chain fatty acids. You know, the butyrate, four-carbon fatty acid, maintains your enterocytes, the lining cells of the colon, whereas the two-carbon acetate and the three-carbon propionate, they're absorbed by the intestinal lining and they travel via, you know, by the portal vein, go to the liver, and the liver makes them into whatever it needs. So what I'm saying is the fiber you eat in plant foods complete protection against leaky gut. And simultaneously, it gives you an even number and an odd number of carbon uh, fatty acids that the liver can make into whatever it needs, okay? Yeah, you can't make your omega-3s, but you get enough of those omega-3s in adequate amounts from plant food. So the point is, the only good fat that, that, that you wanna make sure you get is fiber. It's the secret fat. That's worth knowing, that's very much worth knowing. Okay, you got one more page of these things. Here we are on protein. T. Colin Campbell, he said, animal protein is the most powerful tumor promoter. That's, uh, you know, a Copernican inversion, all right? Uh, everybody used to think protein was the best food, and he's saying animal protein is the worst food. Um, and uh, it also increases cholesterol. A lot of people don't know that, but it, it induces an anabolic uh, state in the muscle, which makes a person gain weight. Uh, and I'm sorry, not, not gain weight is the amount, not the main thing I want to emphasize. It induces an anabolic state in the human body, which drives up blood cholesterol and activates mTOR, does a lot of things. All right, Walter Kempner on protein. Low protein diet lowers the workload of the kidneys. He's basically saving the lives of all these people that used to die from kidney failure. And most of what the kidney does is excrete the nitrogen from protein. There's no nitrogen in carbohydrates or fats. So the nit excess nitrogen is just a waste product excreted in the form of urea from humans. So that's the main thing the kidney does. It does a lot of other stuff, but that's where you know about 75% of its energy is concentrated. So if you lower the dietary protein, you give your kidneys a vacation so they can catch up and heal themselves. All right, James R. Mitchell, PhD, he said, the less protein an animal eats, the longer it lives. And this seems to be true for humans too. So the point of all that was, there's a lot of people always telling you to eat more protein, but in animal studies, the less protein they eat, the longer they live. And and James R. Mitchell says that it's not just animal protein, it's also plant protein. The less protein the animal eats, the longer it lives. And he believes that's true for humans as well. Leonard Hayflick, he's the uh, microbiologist working with human tissue cultures who found that they can only divide most human cells. Human somatic cells are called. Somatic means body. Um, not including stem cells, which are a special subset. Not including germ cells like, you know, uh, your sperm and your eggs. But basically, the vast majority of cells in the human body are somatic cells. And they only divide 60 times, then they die. That's called the Hayflick limit, named after him, Leonard Hayflick. Okay, then Dean Ornish came along and did his experiment on telomeres. And what he found was that um, if a person eats a plant-based diet and manages their stress, they'll maintain their telomeres longer. Okay, so they're slowing down aging. The reason why cells will die after 60 cell divisions is because the ends of chromosomes are called telomeres and they get shortened with each uh, replication of the cell because they're not able to replicate the end part based on where the you know, like DNA polymerase attaches. So the point of it all is that um, you, you, you slow down arrival at the Hayflick limit. You slow down aging, all right? 
by eating a plant-based diet, managing your stress. And then I went into a little more detail about this. For example, animal protein is more leucine and methionine than plant protein. Animal foods are also high in fat and they're high in iron. All of these things, leucine, methionine, fat, and iron, they all activate mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, which is like a building contractor that tells a cell when, when the when to replicate, when to divide. It has to double itself before it can divide, like a contractor making sure all the building materials are available before it divides. So the point is, when you eat the animal food, you're increasing all of these things, methionine, leucine, iron, and fat, and you're speeding up mTOR, which means you're speeding up cell replication, which means you're speeding up arrival at the hay flick limit, which means you're speeding up aging, and you're also speeding up cancer growth. That's why animal foods are a disaster for a cancer patient. Okay, Chef AJ, eat your veggies first, Eat your veggies first. That way you won't eat all the crap first. And if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Okay, Richard Moore. He's the guy who wrote that book, uh, High Blood Pressure Solution, one of the best medical books ever written. He said, the reason why black people have so much hypertension, it's because they don't eat enough potassium. It's not because they eat ex excessive sodium. There were other populations who would eat more sodium than them, but didn't have um, as much hypertension. And the main reasons, they're not, eat they're, eating, they're not eating enough unprocessed plant foods. So... That's a very uh, common health problem. All right, populations who eat a plant-based diet, they have the same blood pressure in their teens as they do in their 70s. Okay, uh, Dr. McDougall, he says, the most common cause of autoimmune disease is leaky gut. And that's an incredibly important statement because that's not in the medical textbooks. Doctors don't know that. And because they don't know that, there's a early rush to treat with these very powerful immune suppressant medications for autoimmune disease. And those patients, uh, many of them could potentially be cured just by resolving their leaky gut. Okay, Dr. Dean Ornish, he says, the vegetarian diet and stress management enabled men with biopsy proven low grade prostate cancer to lower their PSA or at least keep it from increasing. So that was a landmark study that he showed that the prostate cancer men in the phase of watchful waiting were able to stabilize their PSA, prostate-specific antigen, in their blood and not need to go on to more aggressive treatments like surgery or uh, radiation therapy, for example, or other medications. Uh, Ruth Heydrich, PhD, she said that the most common cause of disease is ignorance. And that's a brilliant statement. Basically, most people are sick because they're ignorant and they eat and live in a stupid way. And so the good news is ignorance is curable by learning. So if you learn, you can prevent all these diseases. And, you know, an example of how smart she is, she says, it only took me two hours to become a vegan after talking to Dr. McDougall. Yeah, a smart person, if you read about it, it's so obvious. There's, there's almost nothing in, in, in medical and biological science as obvious as this. Okay. Uh, Lorraine Day, she's a lady who survived for decades with metastatic breast cancer. And she said, you aren't sick because you have cancer. You have cancer because you are sick. You need to learn God's way of healing. So basically... If you optimize your health with a plant-based diet, stress management, and religion, and all that stuff, you will just be healthier in every way, in general, okay? Um, Jack Delatore, PhD, he said, chronic cerebral hypoperfusion, which I've labeled mouse equivalents, if you've heard me lecture on that before, is the most common cause of dementia. And that's a very profound statement because in all the medical books, it'll say Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's chronic cerebral hypoperfusion. And that's an absolutely brilliant statement. He's the guy who tied off the mouse carotid arteries and then saw two months later the mice would become demented. You do an autopsy on them and they don't have a big stroke on the same side the carotid was tied off. Instead, they have a shrunken brain, an atrophic brain on the same side the carotid was tied off. Um, and it didn't happen immediately that they become demented. It took a couple months. So the point was they're losing neurons gradually through apoptosis, programmed cell death, where a cell recycles itself. Okay, then I sort of went um, further with this concept, and I call the Rogers theory of dementia. It's called the neurovascular uncoupling theory, which basically means a mismatch between oxygen delivery and metabolic rate. So the point is you've got a baseline metabolic rate of a neuron and you speed that up when you have stimulants like caffeine, MSG, MFG, aspartame, psychological stress, glyphosate, etc. So that same neuron with a fixed oxygen delivery is gonna more likely go into apoptosis, die. And then not only that, when you drop blood flow to the brain, you don't have to tie off the mouse's carotid artery, just eat a high fat meal and you've dropped oxygen delivery to the tissues, okay? so. When you uncouple, meaning that you, normally it's coupled, meaning that the amount of blood flow and oxygen delivery is coupled to the metabolic activity of the neuron. But when you simultaneously 
increase the metabolic activity of the neuron but drop the blood flow, the neuron's screwed, okay? And our OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, does the same thing. All right, uh, you're truly, what's the healthiest way to live is to be like Adam and Eve but with indoor heating and plumbing and same, same author, me. Ischemic spine is the most common cause of back pain. F minus and GP make it worse, damage collagen. I look at spines all day on a pretty routine basis. I look at many, many, many thousands of them. And, you know, it's sort of obvious. What's destroying people's brains and their hearts? Ischemia, lack of blood flow. Well, guess what? It's the same thing with the spine. It's not rocket science, but no one knows that. And everybody, somebody looks at spines, they're always talking about, is there a disc herniation? <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> disc herniation is not the main problem in spine disease. So anyways, I hope this is helpful. If you want to suggest other ones that should be included here, I know there's probably lots of other good ones. Please put them in the comments and I'll make a part two in the future.